All right, YouTube. I'd like to continue on with my talk about the uh, IQ modulator. And uh, here's kind of an implementation of how we can take uh, the math equation I was talking about and actually create an RF signal. So here we have a computer. We call that the PC. And it can play a wave file. And out the sound card, it's going to have a left signal and a right signal. Well, using the equations I showed you, we can make this wave file, have the PC play it out, and then put these left-right signals into what's called a vector signal generator, as the I and Q signals. And then this would be the RF output that the signal would come out at. So over here is the complex spectrum at baseband. So this would be the spectrum coming out of the PC. And this is the spectrum here, centered around DC. Uh, go to my previous videos to see the math of how to make all this. But the point here is, is that this spectrum here is what is going to be coming out of the PC. And then those signals would go into the vector signal generator. We're going to have an RF output, we'll call that FC. And then this is going to be the spectrum analyzer output. The DC up here is now going to be at FC. And this frequency offset F1 is now going to be FC plus F1. And this frequency offset negative F2 is going to be FC minus F2. So simply by tuning this FC puts this spectrum up here anywhere we want and that is the power of IQ modulators. So we can make, we can replace this with maybe a higher speed ARB that can generate these IQ signals or left right signals with a higher sample rate. Typically your sound card can go up to about 48 kilohertz so this spectrum is from, from a PC is limited to about 48 kilohertz. So from here to here, it's going to be about 48 kilohertz. But many of these vector signal generators, the old HPs, uh, Rode and Schwartz make them. And a lot of these uh, you can easily get on eBay. Most people have uh, are getting rid of these, especially the older frequency ones, so that they can go higher up in frequency. But the math is still the same, and it's good to experiment and try to actually put the spectrums here. Because once we make this PC file, you know, it's up to the math. I could have this one guy be FM modulated, and this signal be AM modulated. Or I could have him be single sideband and have him be FM. So the math gives you a lot more ability to do the signals that you want. So hopefully this shows you how we can take all those uh, complex equations I was talking about and implement them into a hardware solution. So again, we have the computer playing the wave file. Uh, the left and right channels are going into the I and Q, a vector signal generator. You have the RF out centered at some carrier. And this would be the spectrum that you would see if you were to hook it up to a spectrum analyzer or SDR radio. So hopefully this answers some of your guys' questions. Um, look at some of my other videos. I get into the math, mainly how to make this spectrum here specifically, and use uh, MATLAB or even GNU Radio could do this, frankly. Um, you could have all this math that I was talking about be done in GNU Radio uh, and then output this WAV file which then would go into these vector signal generators. Um, or, or you can have you know, the HackRF or other guys that essentially sends the USB IQ data out to this and does this IQ vector math uh, in their devices. So many ways to skin the cat here. I'm just kind of giving you a, uh, a system level diagram of how we can take uh, these WAV files I was talking about and actually have them be created as RF signals by using this thing called a vector signal generator. And uh, hopefully we can see here that, you know, this all can be implemented 
Um, I'll probably do a demo showing these real signals out uh, a receiver, uh, hack RF or something like that. They're all the same once you know the math. Um, so stay tuned and I will show you this isn't just some fancy white paper that this can become real signals that you can uh, listen to. Alright, thanks for watching.